So, where do you live? I guess some numbers in a street name can fill in the blank. But with the average American house being 34 years old, we rarely know the backstory of our own homes. Take me for instance. When I was moving into my Palisades home last year, I caught a strong sense that it was a blessed house. Little did I know that the building was originally not a house at all, but one of hundreds of churches drawn up more than a century ago by a famous architectural family. My name is Alex Knott, and this is a short history of my Washington, D.C. home. In 1904, William E. Pickford began construction of one of the first non-residential buildings in the D.C. Palisades neighborhood. In time, the structure would serve as a meeting place for civic leaders, a Sunday school room for children, a regional parish for Christians, and a home for several large families. The local home builder placed the church on a hilltop overlooking the Potomac River, complete with a 60-foot steeple stretching into the D.C. sky. As time moved forward, such details about the building were hidden by D.C. records and 11 decades of change. The open house and realty listing didn't mention anything about a church, the Sunday school room, nor how the living and family rooms once had the capacity for nearly 200 churchgoers. Instead, these documents stated, incorrectly, that it was just a farmhouse built in 1916. But further research shows that it actually broke ground a dozen years earlier, in September 1904, when it was granted a building permit as a church. The United States was different back then, with Theodore Roosevelt finishing his initial term as president of a 45-state country, the Wright brothers finishing the first successful flight, and a completed Washington Monument soaring above an unfinished National Mall, with the Potomac River flowing over the half where the Lincoln Memorial would be built. Meanwhile, developers Jacob P. Clark and Edward Cottrell were transforming farmlands west of Harlem into new residential lots dubbed the Palisades of the Potomac. The first three neighborhoods were established in 1890 and 1891. Yet, during this decade before Ford's first Model T car, many people were concerned that residents would not ride their carriages or newfangled automobiles along four miles to the center of town. The Palisades were built northwest of the port settlement of Georgetown, in an area mostly known for the foundry and home of Henry Foxall. Foxall built the foundry in 1800 after his friend Thomas Jefferson talked him into moving from Philadelphia to the district and making cannons for the young nation's army. During the War of 1812, the British also found the distance from downtown to this area to be too much to deal with. After setting fire to the White House, the Red Coast marched westward to burn Foxhall's foundry, but called it quits after running into one of DC's infamous thunderstorms. Tracing things back through publications of the day, the 1903 map shows no structure for my house appearing near the lanes of Albany Street and Cotterell Place. But a 1907 rendering shows a church on the northwest corner of Conduit Road in W, and its footprint closely resembles the building here today. The building's architects were Benjamin D. Price and Max Charles Price, a Philadelphia father-son duo who drew up the plans for some 100 churches in at least 22 states, stretching from Florida to Washington State. The Prices literally wrote the book on church architecture in the late 1800s, filling some 150 pages with more than 60 illustrated plans. Today, many of the Prices' other buildings are protected as American treasures under the National Register of Historic Places. Locally, you can also see the Prices' work in Alexandria, Virginia, on landmarks like the Town Hall Building and the Clock Tower for City Hall. As for the construction, records show that Northwest ME Church trustees paid an estimated $3,000 to Pickford who wasn't known for building churches, but rather dozens of homes in Georgetown, Logan Circle, and other DC neighborhoods. While there are no known pictures of the completed church, it would have looked similar to these buildings, which appear to use variations on the Price's architectural design seen here for Plan 54, a popular model during the turn of the century. It also bears a striking resemblance to this 1905 construction photo of the church in the Sunday Star. The Price's Plan 54 also matches the original dimensions of the house in DC records. A current front porch was used by the congregation to enter the building. Today's kitchen and dining areas were used as a Sunday school room 100 years ago, likely separated by wooden slatted partitions. And the main floor rooms were once an auditorium, with a reported capacity nearing 200. It was fascinating to page through a dozen years of newspaper articles detailing religious services, memorials, and Sunday school classes that took place in my home. The pastor was Reverend William H. Black, an 81-year-old Union Civil War veteran who worked in the records division of the pension office. The new parish was a convergence of the Little Falls Methodist Episcopal Church and a chapel branch of the Dumbarton Avenue Church. 
also hidden by most city records, was my home's place in local politics. In 1906, Charles A. Baker and other civic leaders formed the West Washington Citizens Association. Members held their monthly meetings at the Northwest Methodist Episcopal Church, where they pushed for streetlights on Conduit Road, municipal control of their streets, a local firehouse, and even advocated D.C. receiving electoral votes in future presidential elections. Baker and some other association members later took up such causes in 1916 when they created an offshoot called the Conduit Road Citizens Association. The nonprofit became the MacArthur Boulevard Citizens Association in the 40s, and since 1950, the Palisade Citizens Association. Events at the church began to dissipate following Reverend Black's death in 1909. The building was auctioned off in 1916, beginning its transition from a DC house of worship to a Palisades family home. Newspapers don't list the winning bid, but 1917 tax records reveal that the owners were people who frequented the building. Charles Baker and his wife Emma, who also owned other properties on the block. With all this history, I contacted the DC government to help correct the record. But they said they would not change the building's listed 1916 construction date. Officials could not say why this year was listed, and they lacked the demolition and construction permits necessary to substantiate this point. Nothing would change their minds. Even though their listing contradicted newspaper reports describing events at the church, along with maps continuing to list the building as a church on various updates from 1907 to 1919, and photographic evidence of the building's nearly identical appearance. Even the 1916 auction notice makes no reference of any construction or demolition, and instead just states that the building was previously occupied as a church. But after months of phone calls and emails with the city, I concluded that history is sometimes a matter of interpretation. On the night of Monday, July 31st, 1922, an electrical short circuit sparked a fire in the home. Engine 5 scrambled from the middle of Georgetown to battle the blaze. But as the West Washington Citizens Association warned, the distance was too far, leading to some damage of the former church and an injured firefighter. Our Lady of Victory suffered a similar fate a few months later. Finally, the Engine 24 firehouse advocated by West Washington Citizens was built in 1924, with the recent church fire being used as justification. As the house's burnt frame was reinforced and renovated over the years, the Palisades went through some building of their own, adding more than 500 homes in and around the three areas that Clark and Cottrell initially sketched out. Meanwhile, the area continued to change. The CNO Canal closed in 1924 and became a national park. The old cabin John trolley that made local stops in the neighborhood closed down followed by the Georgetown branch of the B&O Railroad. Though there are still a few signs of the old commuter lines, most of their rails were uprooted. The B&O's path was paved over as part of the Rails to Trails project. And today, it clamors with runners, skaters, and cyclists as the Crescent Trail. Three months after Pearl Harbor, on March 5, 1942, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed a law renaming Conduit Road as MacArthur Boulevard for General Douglas MacArthur, who was leading the Allied forces in the Southwest Pacific. Over the years, Frankfurt Street became Edmonds Place, Emporia Street became Dana Place, Detroit Street became Cushing Place, Albany Street became Ashby Street, Cotterell Place became Potomac Avenue, and Newcut Road became Reservoir Road. So I guess when you look beyond the simple house number and street name, that's where I live. What's the story behind your home? In making this film, I talked to several former kids from large families who grew up in our house. They still come back to see their childhood home and share tales of missing staircases, dirt floor basements, and being huddled around air conditioners during hot DC summers. I still feel like the church that became my home never lost its blessed vibe. It's found its place in the Palisades, those old Potomac farmlands that became a bustling neighborhood, with an evolving history growing richer with character. Every Sunday, the Palisades has an extensive farmer's market, and every year, it holds a large 4th of July parade that makes it feel like its own small town, like the suburb that was said to be too far from the city, but somehow is still nestled within the nation's capital.